In this video, I'm taking a look at the Google Chromecast. I've had it for a few weeks now, and it was released about uh, six weeks ago, but I'm only now getting around to uh, unboxing and reviewing it. So, without further delay, by now everyone's familiar with what's inside. comes in a small box, and you've got the dongle itself. A USB power supply. It's rated for 850 milliamps. An HDMI extension cable in case uh, you don't have enough space for your ports or you want to move it somewhere else to get a better reception. As well as a micro USB power cable. And before we get to the Chromecast itself, just a few uh, items I want to review. First off, we've got the technical specifications. It's HDMI and CEC compatible, so CEC is Consumer Electronic Control. And what this does is it allows the dongle to control things such as volume, uh, turn on the TV, change the inputs, etc. Um, each manufacturer has a different name, so Samsung AnyLink, or AnyNet, Brabia Link, um, Kuro Link on Pioneer, etc. Uh, what this means is the dongle can actually turn on your TV, switch the proper input, um, and control the volume from your TV remote. Back to the specs. Uh, it does require USB power. Uh, there was a lot of controversy when this first came out because in the promo videos it only showed the dongle plugged into the TV and some people said that it could get HDMI power. So this is incorrect. It does not supply power through HDMI. Um, and Nantech has a good write-up on this. Uh, MHL HDMI ports can't supply the 500 milliamps of power. Um, HDMI only provides about 50 milliamps. So you do, you do need power for it. If your TV doesn't have a USB port, you can plug in using the um, adapter. Since it was released in July, one of the developers for CyanogenMod, Kush, was able to get uh, it to stream any media, but subsequently Google patched it and doesn't allow this, but hopefully uh, when they release their developer kit, the SDK, they'll allow more third-party applications to um, stream to the Chromecast. Right now, the Chromecast only supports its official apps, as well as uh, streaming from uh, your browser. One thing to note though is there's two types of uh, casting. So first, there's tab projection, which means that the Chromecast is mirroring what's on your browser. And this is limited to 720p and stereo sound. However, if it's doing direct playback, which means that it's streaming directly to the Chromecast and bypassing your laptop or desktop, then it supports full 1080p and 5.1 surround sound audio. Once you've installed the Google Cast extension in Chrome, you can go under Options and choose what type of streaming you want. So automatically resize text to fit, and then there's extreme high bitrate, normal, or sorry, high 720p, as well as standard. So it just depends on how good your Wi-Fi is. So to start off, I'm gonna demo CEC, just to show how it does control your TV and power it on. I'm gonna plug it into the side of my TV, and as you can see, Still not done with the Reno, hence the delay in getting some of this stuff done. I'm going to plug in the adapter into the wall. And plug this into HDMI 2 on the TV. So just to turn on the TV and set up the Chromecast. Switching over to HDMI 2. So when you first plug it in, it's going to create its own Wi-Fi access point, as you can see on the laptop here. Uh, Chromecast. And this allows you to connect directly to it to set it up. So you're going to go to the website, and it's going to instruct you to download the software for your computer. So once you've got that installed, open it up, and it'll connect to the Chromecast and set it up.
it's going to show you a code just to make sure that uh, it's the correct one in case you do have multiple Chromecasts or there's a lot of people around. And then it's going to ask you to, for a name and the Wi-Fi password. Once you've done that, just click continue. And on the TV, it's going to connect to your Wi-Fi network and go online. So once it's finished, it'll say ready to cast, as well as the signal strength of the network. From there, you can click on Start Using Chromecast, and it'll direct you to download the Google Cast extension if you haven't already downloaded it. But once that's all finished, you can click on the Cast button at the top, and your Chromecast should appear under the list. And there you go. So there is a slight lag depending on how fast your Wi-Fi network is and how media intensive the content you're streaming is. So for instance, if you go to a site such as um, YouTube, it'll take a few seconds to pull up. And you can see the lag as I scroll there. Now I'm just going to disconnect and show off the CEC uh, capability. So I'm going to stop casting. And I'm going to turn the TV over to uh, over the air. So just regular TV. And then I'm going to power off. So everything is off. A little red light on the TV. Because the Chromecast is getting power directly from the wall instead of the USB port on the TV, it'll stay on. And this is another reason why it's better to power it from the wall because if you do power it from a USB port on your TV, it'll turn off. And so it won't be connected to your Wi-Fi network and you won't be able to turn it on remotely. So I'm going to go back to the laptop and I'm going to click on cast again. And you'll hear the receiver turn on, the TV is turning on, and it switches over to HDMI 2. So that's what CEC does. It allows you to control uh, HDMI components, uh, power things on, switch inputs, as well as control the volume. So and this works whether you're plugged into the TV or if you're plugged into another component such as a receiver. So I'm just going to quickly unplug and set it up with the receiver. Pull the power. It's on HDMI 2 right now. I'm going to turn this off, hit the input, and go back to TV. And plug the Chromecast into the receiver. Okay, turn off the TV. Uh, plugging the Chromecast into HDMI 2 on my Pioneer receiver. This is a 1326. Give it a few moments to initialize and connect back to the Wi-Fi network. And as you can see, the receiver is off. HDMI 1 goes to my TV. And the TV is off. So once again, I'm going to go back onto the laptop, and the Chromecast should show up under your devices. And once you click Cast again, TV will turn on. Switch over to HDMI 1, because that's my receiver. And the receiver itself should switch over to the proper input. And there you go. So that's just a demo, uh, HDMI CEC controls. A quick word about the quality. If you hit display on your television, the Chromecast does output at 1080p. But as I mentioned earlier, when you're mirroring a tab, it is limited to 720p. So this computer's display is 1440 by 900. 
uh, it's outputting that and then stretching it to 1080p so you will see some artifacts as you notice uh, just around the text it's not as clean there's little marks here so if you are watching something that's not supported uh, such as a, a video streaming site the quality isn't a hundred percent so it's not full HD if I pull up a video And of course, this depends on how good your Wi-Fi is. If you do go to a supported website, such as YouTube or Netflix, it'll stream directly, so it'll bypass your computer and be streaming directly to the Chromecast. Next up, I want to show Netflix streaming. Uh, if you bought your Chromecast early enough, it did come with three months of free Netflix. Just gonna cast the Netflix page itself. And, and once you choose an actual video, it'll stream directly to the Chromecast. So, in, so when you're in an app that supports Chromecast, when you go down, you'll see the same icon as up here, and you can, cr you can uh, send it directly to the Chromecast. This currently only works for YouTube, Netflix, and a few other apps that are listed on the Chromecast webpage. So as you'll see, it does show up as HD and 5.1 surround sound. But the issue a lot of people have been running into is that it only works in stereo. So I'm just going to mute for a second, or just turn it down, using the TV remote. Okay. If you go into the audio button, I don't know why it's not missing here, but usually you'll see Dolby Plus, which is surround sound, or just stereo. A lot of people have said that you cannot plug the Chromecast directly into the TV. This is despite most TVs supporting what's called ARC, A-R-C. And what this means is you can plug in devices into your HDMI ports and it'll send the audio back through HDMI 1 to your receiver for decoding. Unfortunately, it doesn't work here. So when I encountered this, I plugged it directly into my receiver and made sure that the receiver is set up for auto surround sound and Dolby digital uh, or sorry Dolby plus decoding but as you can see you still only get stereo to make sure it wasn't an issue with my home theater setup or um, my receiver at home I brought it over to my parents this is an identical TV in HX701 and the receiver is now a Yamaha RXV571 so the Chromecast is plugged directly into the receiver at the back in HDMI 5, as you can see. It set up the stream. I'm just going to click here and force it to stream the Netflix page itself. Stop casting and then cast. Just to cast the web page. And then I'm going to open up a, a TV show again. And then we're going to send it over to the Chromecast. So again, it is HD 5.1. And unfortunately here as well, the receiver only sets it, uh, detects it as uh, stereo. And then just to turn it down, I go over to the laptop, go under audio settings, uh, it's still audio only stereo. So I'm going to play around with it some more and hopefully isolate the issue uh, and try to figure out why um, so many people are having issues getting Netflix to output in 5.1 surround sound even though it is support, uh, supposed to support it.
just for reference, you can get full surround sound uh, using the audio return channel. So right now I'm just playing something off the air over the antenna. And in Canada and the US and other places where you have over the air TV, it is in 1080i HD and it does have surround sound. So despite uh, many people saying that you have to plug the Chromecast directly into a receiver, you should be able to plug it into uh, an HDMI port on the TV and have it return the audio. So more testing and more uh, troubleshooting, but hopefully I can figure out why the Chromecast won't output 5.1 um, from Netflix. To make sure it isn't an issue with my own Chromecast, I borrowed my friends just to see if the Netflix 5.1 issue uh, shows up here as well. So I'm going to quickly set this up and then go to Netflix and see if I still only get stereo sound. So once again I'm in Netflix with Chromecast 2. Chromecast 1 is right there. And I'm just going to test out if uh, 5.1 works. Send to Chromecast 2. Once again, it is an HD show in 5.1 surround sound. And as you can see here, we're still stuck on stereo. So I did get it working a few times. Um, I still can't isolate the issue or what's causing it. And if I do find a fix, I will update the description. You can also stream to the Chromecast from other devices such as a tablet or your phone. So go into Netflix or YouTube or Google Music. And once you download the APK, the Chromecast APK, you'll see a new button up there. And if you open up a video and then hit the cast button, it'll send it over to your Chromecast. While it's doing this, you can queue up more videos as well as control it at the bottom here. So there's the queue and you can load up multiple videos to watch as well as control things. Lastly, I do want to show that it does work on a wired connection as long as you're on the same network. So the Chromecast is ready to cast. I'm just going to go over to my desktop, excuse the mess. And we're connected using uh, gigabit ethernet. And I can just go up to the top, click on cast, and choose the Chromecast. Just back out. And there it is. So you can cast from tablets, PCs, uh, laptops, as long as you're all on the same network. Overall, the Chromecast is a great little device, especially for $35. Hopefully when it gets released internationally, it'll still be equivalently priced. Um, everyone hates typing with multi-tap on a remote control or using the directional buttons. And despite some of the newer TVs with fast processors, uh, their web browsers still aren't great. So unless you've got a good home theater PC with a keyboard, being able to use a laptop or use your phone, to send web pages as well as other content directly to your TV is a great use for the Chromecast. Um, I don't use Netflix myself, but I do use YouTube. So being able to send videos and then queue them up, as well as Google Music and Google Video, is a great reason to spend $35. As always, all the links are in the description, and uh, please leave any questions in the comments. Once again, thanks for watching and subscribing.